Can you, Jonathan Macri, name the seven MVPs to never win an NBA title? <sighs> okay, I'm, I have a list, so I'm not going to look at the list. Okay. Even, though I just, even though I just looked at it and I saw one name, which hopefully I would have thought of, which is James Harden. There are people without a list, James Harden is correct, that are playing along at home. So, <laughs> you know, as okay, they're let, yelling names at their their I'm, podcasts I'm li- or YouTube. Literally turning my phone over. Um, okay. Okay. James Harden uh, is James, one. 2019, James, 2018 NBA MVP. Nikola Jokic. Uh, Nikola Jokic is two, the 2021 and 2022 MVP. Steve Nash. Steve Nash. Oh, there are eight then, by the way. I apologize. What? There's eight players to never win an M- to win the MVP, to not win a ring. He's an eighth. I actually forgot to write him down. But Steve Nash is correct. The 2004 and 2005 MVP. Um, Allen Iverson. Allen Iverson is correct. 2001. Carl Malone. Steve Nash was 05 and 06, by the way. Correct on Carl Malone. The 99 and the 97 MVP. There are three you haven't said. Um, One I'm very surprised you haven't said yet. One, you're very. I'm. I'm literally. I'm trying to decide in my mind how I want to go through this, in terms of like, do I want to go in reverse order of MVPs and think through all the past? Um, and oh, Barkley, Barkley, 1993 MVP. And there's two left. Yes, there's two left. One. I won't give you a hint. I won't give you a hint. No, don't don't give me don't give me any hints. Don't give me any hints. So you've so far said Nikola Jokic, James Harden. Allen Iverson, Carmelo. Oh, Russell Westbrook. Russell Westbrook, 2017 MVP. Carmelo, Charles Barkley, and Steve Nash. There's one that you haven't said. And if I know our audience, like I, I think I do, they are yelling at their phones right now that you haven't said this MVP's name yet. Well, an MV, a- MVP to not win an NBA championship. It's not a Nick. Yes, so it that's- is. It's a current New York Nick. Oh my goodness! <laughs> you know what? You know what? You want to laugh? What's up? I don't think I would have. I don't think I would have said him. You wouldn't have said Derek Rose. No, I don't think I would have remembered. Okay. Well, Derek because Rose. I was the other thinking, MVP to not win a title. Because I was thinking through like of all the players that I've been thinking about for this exercise, and sadly, Derek Rose is not someone that I have been thinking about. He's the one name on this list I don't have written down, and it's why I think while he. Probably will end up in the Hall of Fame. We'll see how his career so, ends, but I I think there's there's no all time great status. He will look like an anomaly on on the list. I, unfortunately, I I did the deep dive around the All Star break this year. I don't want to t- t- sidetrack to a Derrick Rose conversation, um, but I did I did the deep dive, and the sad truth is there is no great comp in terms of Hall of Famer because like you could give me Ralph Sampson, but Ralph Sampson is one of the greatest college players of all time. Mm-hmm. Um, you could give me, you could give me Bernard King, but Bernard King has like, uh, I mean, it's just, just more, you know, more all NBAs like he's a uh, playoff. You know, he has a legendary playoff success. You know, Rose did have the one, one playoff year. Um, I know, yeah, that's not fair. He had a couple of playoff years, but like there, there's always distinguishing factors. No matter where you like, Bill Walton um, is another one that comes up, and like Bill Walton was reached higher heights than Rose. the The best comp, honestly, I come up, I came up with, and it's not a good one for his Hall of Fame chances, is Penny Hardaway, who finished third in MVP voting um, in I think it was the two years at, uh, his in '96, and you know, accumulated some decent counting stats, all star teams, all NBA, the whole thing. And he, you know, he never sniffed it. So anyway. Yeah. It's unfortunate. And I'm glad he was able to turn himself into someone with a, a career afterwards. Um, after the injuries, uh, it's, un- yeah. it's just unfortunate, you know, Body well, well, I should say also one of the greatest college careers of all. If, right. if not the greatest college career of all. Time. That's the thing. If you, for all the guys that don't really have the NBA resume, there's something outside the NBA that gets them in the basketball Hall of Fame. Like Tony Kukoc just made the Hall of Fame. One of the greatest yeah. international players. International. Ever, you know? Yeah. So um 
I don't know. I, I actually think he probably will get in because I think the, the NBA, say this about the NBA, they like their narratives. It's the NBA. Yeah. <laughs> so Derrick Rose played basketball. He is yeah. eligible for the Hall of Fame. Okay, so I get to go first. I, I am. I just want to say uh, uh, right off the top, I'm fascinated to see which way you go here because in my mind, there are... I think there are four legitimate possibilities. Okay. That's interesting. Cause I I think I also have I have three. And really I have two. Because one is not gonna play for my team. Um, I okay. So, <laughs> so just so like that's that interesting because out. then you're leaving some okay. I'm, okay, well let's let's play this out. Well, so here we go. We'll start with and this listen, respect to the old head old heads out there, because I'm gonna go with someone that I never saw play that like technically the, did get an NBA championship ring, but no, he didn't. But so he was inactive for the finals. They did give him an NBA championship ring. Did they? And then he sold it in 2013 for $130,000. It did not mean anything to him. Elgin Baylor is my first pick um, for 14 years was one of the greatest was the greatest power forward that the sport had seen. Um, you could argue like was continuous it is the second or third greatest power forward ever behind Tim Duncan and a name that might come up. You could argue like that, that debate has come up a ton. Um, Giannis, I'm sure we'll have something to say about it before his career is over. Uh, Elgin Baylor was in those Lakers Celtics battles all throughout the sixties and seventies. But played two games the year, two games and nine games. His last two seasons of the NBA. His last season in the NBA was the year that the Lakers finally won the title with that seventy-two team. And as I mentioned, was inactive for the playoffs. The Lakers gifted him a ring, and he just it meant nothing to him. Um, so much so that he auctioned it off. Um, averaged twenty-seven and fourteen for his entire career. So, um, so yeah, he would have been my first pick. I think it's the correct first pick. Um, he's been the great. He was the greatest player and ever won a championship when he retired 50 years ago. And I think he's there's an argument that he's still the greatest player of all uh, to never win a championship. A couple of things I just want to add to this. Um, Elgin Baylor came in and as a rookie, as a rookie, mm-hmm. finished third in MVP voting and made first team all NBA. He proceeded to make first team all NBA every year until the 1965, 66 season. And the only reason he didn't make it that year is because in the 1965 Western conference, I think it was finals. He tore up his knee um, back when tearing up your knee was a pretty bad thing. So we didn't make it the next year. The next year was a down year from he only averaged 30 minutes a game. He averaged like 16 points a game. The next three years after that, Three more first team All NBAs and another third place finish and a fifth place finish in MVP. Um, never won MVP. Finished second once and th- third uh, three times. A fourth place finish, two fifth place finish, sixth place. I mean, this guy was one of the best handful of players in the league for a decade. And uh, yeah, I mean, I think you nailed it. Um, he's I, I, last one last stat. So he made it to three finals before tearing up his knee. Um, the second of those was a three, four loss to Boston, 1962 NBA finals. Elgin Baylor averaged 40 points and 18 rebounds in those <laughs> NBA finals, seven games. And then in 1963, just a, just a ho-hum 34 and 15 against, uh, in a six game loss to Boston. Okay. And to this day, last stat I'll add, first of all, 10 time all NBA, all of them first team all NBA granted yep. two teams. Two, two, two all NBA teams back then, nine teams in the league. But he also, to this day, still has the third highest point per game average for a career behind Michael Jordan and Will Chamberlain. So, right, six, seven, eight, nine. Average more than 30 points in a playoff series 10 separate times. Jeez. Um, and every one of those playoff series averaged at least 12 rebounds. Uh, just a phenomenal player. Okay. Um, I'm happy you I'm I'm happy he went first. Um so my first pick is probably gonna be a little biased, and that's because I am about 150 pages into a biography on him that just came out uh, a couple months ago. I'm gonna take Charles Barkley with my first pick. Interesting. Okay. 
So, which, by your reaction, I am assuming he was not one of the players that was. No, he is. Under, I, he is not, un, I, under consideration. So okay. let me be clear. My interesting is that there's a Charles Barkley book I haven't heard about. So, but while you Barkley. do this, <laughs> I, while you do this, I may be going to Amazon. So <laughs> okay, um, I look. I could I could give you stats and and things about Barkley. He obviously is is one of the MVP winners. Um, the thing, and again, this is why maybe a little bias here because I'm in the midst of this book and I also just happen to like Charles Barkley as a I like him as a person. I I always I loved watching him as a basketball player. Um from like day one of his NBA career, there was very little question like, oh, this guy is one of the great talents that has has touched the league um, in a very long time. He also came in in a very like weird situation in that he was coming into a Philadelphia 76ers team that was like not uh, that far removed from winning the NBA championship. They won the 1983 NBA championship. He was drafted in 1984. So there was a season in between. So his first season, he was still on the roster deferring to the likes of Ju- of uh, Julius Irving and Moses Malone and like Andrew Tony like so he only averaged 14 points a game his first season his second season he averaged 20 and it really wasn't until his fourth season when like the old guard had been fully shuffled out that he was really able to make an impact that his talent I mean, he could have made that. All I'm saying is if he was in a different situation from like day one, I think he would have seen a very different impact from day one in terms of his own individual numbers. Um, That said, uh, finished sixth in MVP voting his second year, his third year, fourth year, fourth. uh, Next year after that, sixth. And then he finished second in MVP voting in the 1989-90 season. So, like, again, he was just, like, r- walked into the league as kind of like a top-10 player, and by his second year, he was, like, a top-5-6 player. Obviously, he had his All-NBA um, run. He had an M- he got his MVP. The longevity wasn't there, which is pits him against another guy who uh, one of us will have to pick at some point, probably pretty soon. But there's no question who the best power forward of his era was as far as I'm concerned. And that's Charles Barkley. So he's my first pick. I agree. And have ordered Barkley. Um, what, what's the book called? Hold on. It's just called Barkley. I know. I, I, I'm now going back to my orders. Hold on a second. Oh, I didn't officially order it yet. I'm ordering this book and now may join you in in the, the downtime reading of Charles Barkley's memoir. Good pick, John. Um, so I know, I know who you're talking about. The other power forward that should probably be taken right now. Well, he's not. I'm going with Chris Paul. So, whoa, 